going from the last lecture uh, we will continue from there um, in the last lecture on uh, exploratory data analysis uh, uh, we saw how to do uh, exploratory data analysis using PROC means PROC uh, univariate and then PROC frequency so, uh, in this lecture uh, we'll use couple of more features of PROC univariate and then we'll also uh, talk about uh, PROC correlation or PROC core uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll see some more feature uh, of uh, PROC core so uh, <coughs> we'll, we'll continue with the same data if I go to the work library uh, my data set is there so the data set is taken from SAS help you can uh, see it in SAS help library uh, I have taken it from there uh, onto my work library let's have a look at it before uh, doing the exploratory data analysis so uh, <coughs> uh, we have the data on uh, cars we have make model and different features of the car Uh, as I said, uh, PROC univariate is very helpful doing exploration on data. So before you, uh, you do modeling, uh, you know, for every numerical variable, you just put all the numerical variable in the univariate uh, procedure and try to analyze different aspects of it, different characteristics of that variable. Uh, it really help, helpful because it gives you a very detailed analysis of that variable. Um, so, uh, in this particular model, we will we'll, uh, see uh, some more feature about PROC univariate. Uh, if, if you remember in the last lecture, uh, we, we studied how to like plot a histogram uh, and how to like have a quantile plot all that. <coughs> so, uh, there is an option uh, known as AWL or ALL, wherein if you put that option in PROC uh, univariate, you will have uh, a lot more statistics that you usually don't get in a uh, you know in a simple proc univariate and also you get some more plots so let's run this so the syntax as you can see is proc univariate same syntax only difference is that you just have to uh, put a double l at the rightmost part of it so um, when you run this So uh, when you run this, uh, you know you will have this uh, in output. It will start with the same output that we have seen before, uh, mean, standard deviation, skewness, and it will have some additional uh, start, uh, you know output as well. For example, mode was in there uh, last time, so you have the mode as well. Um, then. <coughs> Then uh, you know test for hypothesis testing for the uh, mean was there, but for count was in there. So now even the hypothesis for uh, count, hypothesis testing for count is there. So that's an additional thing. Uh, and then test of normality was in there. So you, you have the test of normality here. As you can see, you have Shapiro will test, Kolmogorov Miro test, Anderson Darling test. So all these tests are done to see whether your data is normally distributed or not. As you can see, uh, it, it's it's uh, you know significant that that, that means your data is actually uh, you know normally distributed. And then you have trimmed sorry trimmed mean and uh, Winsor's mean. So these are means wherein uh, the outliers are not taken into account. Either they are trimmed or they are forcefully made to be uh, you know uh, similar to the uh, the normal observations. Okay, so in trim means you have no outliers, and in Windsor S means you have like the outliers are taken, uh, you know, close to your uh, mean value. Okay, so uh, so how is how is it different from the, your normal mean? Your normal mean, you know, includes your outliers. So that doesn't speak, uh, uh, you know, that the normal mean uh, 
could be affected by the uh, outliers and uh, you probably may not be able to interpret uh, the mean value uh, very accurately and that doesn't really represent your normal behavior of data when you remove the outliers based on certain criteria and then take the mean that uh, will be completely different than the one uh, having outliers provided if you have outliers in the data if they are similar pretty similar you can say okay there are no uh, outliers so take the normal mean and then track the trimmed mean and then we should raise mean see if they are different or they are similar as you can see uh, you know trimmed mean and winterized mean will mostly be similar you know uh, very very close to each other and then take the normal mean if all three are similar you will be sure that your data is not uh, having any outlier else you, you need to go back and see whether you have outliers and then take necessary measures uh, for that uh, you have uh, interquartile range. So interquartile range is nothing but your difference between your, uh, you know, the quartiles uh, Q1 and Q3. You have Gini, uh, Gini's mean index and then uh, mean absolute deviations. So these are like alternatives to your standard deviations, Gini index, Gini mean uh, difference or the MAD, mean absolute um, deviation. So all these characteristics are, you know, it, 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 it talk about how spread your data is. Okay, that's what we get from variance or sigma, right, or, or the standard deviations. So you can also look into the statistics uh, which are considered to be, you know, more robust in nature. Uh, in the sense that it really uh, is consistent uh, in, in different uh, subsamples. Whereas mean and variance could be biased or may not be representing the true uh, distribution of the uh, data sometimes. So more robust statistics are the ones you can see on the screen and uh, these this, uh, statistics can be uh, of you sometime. <coughs> and then uh, you have the quantile distribution. Uh, uh, the uh, quantile distribution as you can see it's, it's much more detailed right than the uh, than what we have seen previously uh, you have the extreme observations so uh, these are all extreme observations that uh, both highest and the uh, lowest observations there are extreme values that means top uh, five uh, values and the bottom five values these are also given so you can just take a look at them and see whether you know uh, you know, couple of these values are uh, you know completely uh, different and they're very far away from the normal observations so it helps really to detect uh, you know outliers and see the extreme uh, how the extreme value are really uh, uh, whether they are really causing problem or they're uh, you know simple enough to handle and you don't uh, really need to bother about them and then you have frequency count for each one of the variable mostly it will be one uh, but where sometimes you know in a data where your data uh, your observations are repeated across values so you, you will get to know like how it is uh, uh, you know distributed like what is the frequency for each of these unique values finally which is very very important are the plots that you are getting here so you have the histogram uh, in the in the form of uh, a leaf uh, and stem chart and then you have box plot and you have normal probability plot to know about these things uh, you need to go back and uh, read what uh, is yes, stiff uh, you know uh, leaf and stem chart what is a box plot uh, and then what is what is a uh, you know normal probability plot or qq plot so uh, what essentially we get to know from the uh, you know um, the charts, the first two charts is that how the data is distributed. So that is another way of knowing the data. Not very important, but sometimes, uh, you know, the histogram is not just enough. You, you need to see it uh, uh, in different ways and uh, probably you may need it sometimes. Um, you may need to see your, uh, you know, box plot sometime as well. So uh, the normality, we already have seen that uh, there are tests so to show that uh, your data is normal or not. But to get a uh, you know a, you know uh, a visual uh, you know 
just to see the uh, just to visualize the data it's always good to uh, see the qq plot also qq plot is nothing but uh, it's a quantile quantile plot wherein your uh, data is plotted against the the uh, theoretical normal distribution so the pluses that you are seeing here are uh, the theoretical normal distributions and your uh, asterisk are your data so uh, if your asterisk lie on the same line and then they are uh, occupying most of the places of the pluses then you will see that your data is normal or near normal there is some deviation from the normality like you can see at the top you have uh, some asterisks which are not falling on the line but yes it can be uh, considered as a near normal so um, that's how we, we interpret the graphs if, if you want to uh, plot only the 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 graphs that we saw we just saw just now uh, and you, you don't need any other uh, statistics to be there just use plot option okay use plots here and then run it you will see that uh, the detailed description is not there uh, you will only have the plots and only the basic uh, statistics uh, you will be getting um, and the plot of course Another important thing in uh, EDA is to see uh, the correlations. Correlation is important because uh, as you know in modeling exercises you cannot have uh, your uh, independent uh, variables uh, very highly correlated that will uh, be causing problem, the problem of multicollinearity. How to handle multicollinearity, how to handle high correlations? is a separate topic that uh, we will cover in another lecture but how to know whether your data is very highly correlated or not how to get a matrix that will show you uh, that your data is correlated or not so we are using proc core for that proc co double r and then we have added some more feature of it to see the histogram and then you you will also see some matrix plots uh, you know that that's for visualization purpose and let's just run it syntax is very simple uh, you, you can always add your additional feature else if you don't want to add you can just uh, you know delete from this place okay so this portion you can just delete if we if you want only the correlation you can sorry you, you have to give the variable of, of obviously so this portion has to be there but uh, this part and the part about that you know this one you can just remove them if you don't want uh, the matrix plot along with the uh, correlation matrix so let's run this was something wrong Okay, I am struggling with the syntax. I will cover it later. We will just see uh, the uh, score lesson now. Later on, I will show you how to have the uh, matrix plot. Something is wrong again. Okay, we also need to remove this part. Okay, so we have just run the simple uh, correlations. Uh, we'll plot the, um, you know, the the matrix plot later. I'll just check the syntax again. 
and then I'll, in a separate video I'll, I'll explain about it <coughs> so um, your matrix your, your correlation matrix uh, look like this uh, you have okay the, the last one you have your variable uh, both in the row as well as in the column so the diagonal ones will be uh, always be one okay the correlation between length and length as you know the correlation between two I mean the same variable is always one so length and then you have length both in the uh, row as well as in the column so the correlation is one the correlation between length and weight is 0 0.6 similarly the correlation between length and invoice is 0 0.1 double six and that with engine size is 0 0.6 similarly if you go downward the correlation between length and weight is 0 0.69 okay so if you take the uh, only the uh, diagonal matrix only the uh, uh, semi diagonal matrix that is enough uh, you know the semi diagonal matrix is again repeated uh, at the uh, rightmost part of it or uh, you know the uh, the lower diagonal matrix and the upper diagonal matrix they are just a reflection of each other mirror image of each other each other so um that's how you interpret the correlations and then you see like which all uh, cases uh, where you have high correlation like like you see uh, the correlation between engine size and weight are highly correlated it's 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 0 0.8 so that can uh, be uh, a problem in the modeling so uh, you may want to remove one of variable or do uh, some uh, modification to variable ensure to ensure that your variables are not uh, very correlated so um, that's the way you uh, interpret uh, a correlation matrix so uh, you can uh, save this output in a separate data set sometimes we uh, may need uh, uh, you know this to be saved somewhere so what you do you use out option and then give a name so we are saving it in the work library uh, you can always save it in any permanent library so if you run this you will see that in the work uh, library you have your uh, correlation matrix if you click on this the correlation uh, values are now saved in it separate data sets okay and along with the correlation you have mean standard deviation and the number of observations so uh, that's all in the uh, this particular video we'll see uh, uh, how to use like the matrix plot in proc correlation in the next video we'll also uh, talk about uh, you know proc insight which is another way of uh, you know exploring your data in sas and uh, and we'll also talk about uh, how to do uh, exploratory data analysis using clustering using factor analysis and principal component analysis so thank you